Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending September 8th. First up, this article is entitled Wood Pulp Extract Stronger Than Carbon Fiber or Kevlar. Who would have thought actual wood fiber, if it's taken down to what they call nanocrystals, can actually be stronger and str- can actually be stronger than carbon fiber or Kevlar. The Forest Products Laboratory of the U.S. Forest Service has opened a U.S. $17 million project plant for the production of cellulose nanocrystals from wood byproducts materials such as wood chips and sawdust. As far as cost effective, too, that's the thing about this. If they can get it really down and with wood as your main component rather than carbon fiber or Kevlar, you can get the cost way down to where this would be extremely affordable. The only thing about it that is kind of uh, minus is the fact that if it's exposed to moisture or soaked in water or anything like that, it loses its strength very rapidly. The type of lattice work that gives it its strength starts losing its bonding structure. So this would have to be somehow either encapsulated or something else would have to be added to it to make it more water resistant. But if it, for uses right now that where it would not be exposed to moisture or water, uh, it could be really great. Uh, possibly even maybe for bulletproof vests or something, very inexpensive bulletproof vests, different things like that. So as usual, I will post all the links. This is from gizmag.com. I will post all the links down below in the description. The second article, I'll give credit to RC62. Now, I had already seen this article before last week. If you remember on the TDD report, I talked about printers being able to make different products so that people would not have to necessarily go to the store. This is an article that I also had up myself, but at the time was not going to get into it because it can generate other controversy, but this is about 3D printer to, you don't bring a 3D printer to a gunfight yet. It's about actually using a 3D printer to actually print out a functioning gun. And I noticed one of the topics going around right now in the Motovlog community is gun control. And so this would probably stir up a little bit of controversy, and if people want to go ahead and argue it as a thread on this site. That's absolutely fine by me. Uh, I just didn't want to at the time because it wasn't really part of the main subject matter. But yeah, we can discuss that about uh, what are we going to do now that plans are out there and freely distributed on the internet so somebody can print out a functioning gun. Now my take on this too is I would use the term functional very loosely. I would say probably with the plastics they have right now, and even they say that in the article, the type of plastics and materials you can print with on a printer, you've probably got way more than a 50-50 chance the thing is going to blow up in your hand, probably injure or kill you. So while in principle this may be something that can be done, it's not something that really concerns me or scares me. If somebody really wants to construct a gun, they would probably be better off going and taking some uh, field army manuals that they've distributed to pilots shot down behind enemy lines. They show them how to construct firearms out of local materials, maybe found in a store, like a hardware store or something like that. You would probably be better off constructing a shotgun out of a plumbing pipe and be safer doing it than you would using a 3D printer to print out a gun. Um, I would say it's possible if you're a licensed gunsmith and you really know the type of gun you want to construct and you were just making the lower receiver part out of plastic, you could probably make a fairly safe gun if you were really trained well in it using the right type of design and everything else. But even then, I think it would be very limited use and because of the type of plastic in the printers, the gun would eventually either become non-functional or become dangerous after a few shots. So my advice is, as a principal or as a learning experience, fine, but... I would not. If somebody handed me one of these guns made from a printer, uh, I would not be willing to go and take it to a range. You can buy gun parts already and, and manufacture a gun if you want. Um, make your own gun if you want to. As a matter of fact, I'm working on one myself, a, a Colt 45, using nothing but parts that are meant to be used to manufacture a gun. And even after then, when I do end up getting it fully assembled, maybe in a few years, it's going to be checked out by competent people before I take it out, hold it in my hand, and pull the trigger. That's just my take on it. Next up, this is an article sent in by Sovereign Soul. This is another action cam. It's the current action cam, actually, that More Death 13. I'll put a link to his channel down there. It's one he's using. It's 
uh, action glasses where they actually take in the lenses in the center part of the glasses. This is being used by Mordeth 13 as his camera of choice. The price is around $350. I will put the link below to where you can buy it. The retail, $350, so that does compare with the other action cameras, although because it's built into a pair of sunglasses, it is rather limited. You pretty much are going to use it for your point of view wherever you look at. It's not like you're going to be able to take this camera and use it a lot for other things. might not be a real concern if you're a moto vlogger anyway, and that's the kind of vlogs you do. That might be fine. does have replaceable lenses at a fairly reasonable cost. Um, if you want to get more about it, actually check out as he's using them. Um, from what I've seen on the videos he's using, it seems to be a fine camera, really good quality. Next up, I have an interview from Navy Thomas 8. He just recently bought the JVC Action Cam, which they did try to push out just ahead of the Sony Action Cam, which will be coming out shortly. So he got a hold of one of those, and I'm going to give you his opinion on that. Before we start on the interview, I just want to tell you that the one view of the JVC camera does appear that he zoomed in a little bit on the shot, but he actually didn't. It's at full extension, wide angle. The, sometimes the actual, even though they'll say a camera has a 170 degree lens, does not necessarily mean at all high def resolutions you're going to see 170 degrees of view. Depends on the focal length of the lens, distance from lens to the pickup, and the size of the pickup. All these things are in consideration, but just to let you know, as uh, if you go and click the link below, which I'm going to give you the top to bottom comparison that he did on his channel, that's the reason why it looks like that it's a little bit zoomed in, but it actually isn't. JVC, uh, Addiction, Addiction, GCXA1, total freaking junk, don't waste your money on that, I tried it, I don't like it, it's going back to the dealer, and my card is officially removed, and it's going home. Back to Victor. <laughs> okay, you heard that That's from the Navy Thomas 8. It's a failure as far as an action cam for moto vloggers. At least the one he got, unless maybe he might have gotten a bad one, but it doesn't look pretty good. It doesn't look good for JVC right now as far as the action cameras compared to uh, GoPro. And my vid test number two, I shot it. I did the zoom because it has zoom which I thought was an excellent uh, feature for it that, you know, I was thinking, well, if I put it up here and then I see something interesting, I can just reach up and hit the zoom button and I can zoom in on whatever I'm riding by. Man, when you zoom it in, it's total grainy. Okay, so it's digital zoom, no optical zoom, so. Yeah, not obviously. Now, at, at full wide angle, how does the picture quality, is it uh, night and day, uh, different from the GoPro, as far as the video quality? I, I am going to shoot one more video today where I'm going to put them side by side. Okay. And I'm going to do that like this. But just as far as eyeballing it, just in your eyes, looking at the raw video on both cameras, would you say the JVC even comes close to the GoPro 2, or does it miss by a ways? It's worse than the drift. Wow, okay. Oh my god. Yeah. I, 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 I can't believe I'm, I'm saying it. If you're going to actually compare two cameras, and you have to get one of two, he recommends the drift if you're going to get that above the JVC, which is... Yep, yep. Drift is one step higher. If you see a lot of his on-the-porch videos, he actually uses a JVC camcorder for that, but a standard type oh, of JVC yeah. camcorder. I, I, I forgot that part. Yeah, it's yeah. a it's a good camera. I really like it. This is my JVC handheld. This is the... Uh, so it's H, HD 300... HM 300 BU. Yeah, which I'm not sure if you can still get, but really price, what he paid for it, and the quality you get out of it for the price he paid, I thought that was a really good deal and a pretty good camera. So I was expecting a little better from JVC in the action cam arena. So if you go to, if you go to my, uh, I'll link it on here. If you go to my 
task number two of this piece of junk. You're going to hear my audio out of this. It's unbelievably awesome. The video is awesome. And that's the only reason I went with this, because I thought this camera has to compare somewhat with this one. Oh, my God. Total fail. Yeah. It doesn't even measure up to one-tenth of the power of this one. So it looks like this time JVC was just trying to push something out to compete with GoPro, and they did it too quickly. I think, honestly, they're trying to, they were trying to beat Sony, because Sony's coming out with the action cam at the end of the month. Okay. And uh, I think they were trying to beat Sony to the punch, and they got punch drunk because... I'm punching them in the head that hard because they're so stupid for putting this junk out. So if anyone would like the complete interview, which goes for a full 14 minutes, and we also talk a little bit about the new upcoming Contour camera, go to ontheairtv.com, and I will give you the link below for that. Until then, that's it for this week. I will catch you next week.